Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. For this video, we're going to be doing another particle kinetics example. However, instead of looking at a single particle, we're actually going to be looking at a pair of particles. And the more technical term for that is a system of particles. The example that we're going to be looking at is a pair of boxes, one sitting on top of the other. We need to give these labels, so I'm going to call the top one A and the bottom one B. And in this situation, we're going to have a force applied to block A that we're going to call P. And there's going to be some sliding that occurs between both block A and block B and block B and the ground. So we need some coefficients of friction for those situations. So I'm going to note that we are assuming that in both of these contacts, the blocks are sliding relative to each other. So now let's look at the kinetic equation, which is simply the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. In the past, this was all there was. We didn't have to worry about anything else. But in this case, we have two separate blocks. So we'll say that the force applied to block I, where I can be anything, is equal to the mass of block I multiplied by the acceleration of block I. So this gives us two separate equations. We can also look at the sum of the forces over all of the blocks, and that would give us the mass of the total system multiplied by the acceleration of the center of gravity. This m here is simply equal to the sum over i of all of our particle masses. And this acceleration is the acceleration of the center of gravity, which is also called the center of mass. Now this equation is not going to be useful in our situation. So if we had a situation where both of these blocks were moving together, say they weren't sliding, well in that case we would be interested in this acceleration of the center of gravity because the acceleration would just be the same for both blocks. But for this case we're really just interested in looking at the individual blocks. So I'm going to draw two separate free body diagrams one for block A and one for block B. Now the first force that we can find here is this P that we defined. So P is just going to be pointing directly to the right. Now P is what we call an external force. It is a force that has been externally applied to one of our blocks. Another example of that is going to be the force of gravity acting on A. Now on block B, we also have the force of gravity, and this is still an external force. The other external force that we'll have is the normal force of the ground pushing back on B. And then also, since this is moving against the ground, we're going to have the force of friction acting to the left, since we're going to be opposing the movement caused by P. And that's going to be the force of friction acting from the ground onto B. So A is going to have two external forces, B is going to have three external forces. Now we're also going to have internal forces. These are forces that are inside our system of particles. So A is going to have some forces that are acting on B, and likewise B is going to have equal and opposite forces acting back on A. So the way that I'm going to write these, I'm going to say that there's a normal force of B pushing on A. So I can write that as normal of B acting on A. And likewise, there's going to be a friction force of B acting on A. These internal forces are going to have equal and opposite effects on the other object. This friction force that's pointing to the left on A is going to be pushing to the right on B. And we say that this is the force of friction of A acting on B. The normal force of B pushing up on A is going to cause some force pushing down on B. So we're going to have the normal force of A acting on B. Everything is nicely divided in I and J here. We don't have anything that we need to split. 
So first, let's define our coordinate system. It's pretty straightforward for this one. We can just say that i is pointing to the right and j is pointing directly upward. So that means this force p we can write as a magnitude and a direction. Magnitude of p and it's pointing directly to the right, so that's i. Force of gravity here, we can write as a magnitude of m times g, and the direction there is negative j. It's pointing down. The normal force of b acting on a, I'm going to give this a magnitude of n b a, and this is pointing upward, so it has a direction of j. And then finally, our friction force of B acting on A is going to have a magnitude of mu AB multiplied by our normal. So this is mu AB multiplied by NBA, and this is acting in the negative I direction. So I'm going to write a negative I. So we have our two external forces and then our two internal forces, the normal and friction between the two blocks. So next, I'm going to write the three external forces for B. So first off, we're going to have the force of gravity for B, which is going to be M times G in the negative J direction. And this makes me realize that we need to label what masses we're talking about. So the mass for A is just going to be MA. The mass for B is going to be MB. And then we have the normal force and the friction force of the ground acting on B. So the normal force is going to have a magnitude. I'm going to call that magnitude NGB, and that's going to be in the positive J direction. The force of friction is going to have a magnitude of this mu BG multiplied by our NGB, and that's going to be in the negative I direction. So that takes care of our external forces on B. And now we can write our internal forces. So remember that these forces need to be equal and opposite to their counterpart, which means that the normal of A acting on B is going to be a negative in B A in the J direction, which matches up with what we drew right here. And the force of friction of A acting on B is going to be a positive mu a, B, N, B, A, multiplied by I. So now we're going to write the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration for each block split into I and J components. So first, let's look at the forces acting on A in the I direction. And for this, we're going to have P, and we're going to have our force of friction, which is negative mu AB in BA. And this is going to be equal to mass times our acceleration. Now, we haven't split up our acceleration yet. Neither of these blocks should be moving in the J direction. There are no forces here that allow it to move in J. So our accelerations for both of these are going to be in I. So I can write that the acceleration of A is simply equal to the acceleration of A magnitude completely in the I direction. And likewise, the acceleration of B is just equal to AB in the I direction. And all that these mean is that we are not moving at all in J. So back to our equation, we're looking at the I component of force is equal to mass times acceleration for A. So this is going to be the mass of A multiplied by the acceleration of A, which we said was all in the I direction. So now let's look at the forces of B in the I direction. For this, we have the force of friction of the ground acting on B and the force of friction of A acting on B. The force of friction of the ground is going to be a negative mu BG in GB, and that was an I. For friction of A acting on B, this will be plus mu AB in BA. And all of that together is going to be equal to the mass of B multiplied by the acceleration of B. All right, so now let's look at A in the J direction. So our only external force in J is this MAG. So this is negative MAG, 
and then we have NBA also in J. So we'll have plus NBA, and we don't have any acceleration in J, so the right-hand side is just going to be zero. All right, our last equation is B in the J direction. For this one, we have two external forces. The force of gravity is negative mb times g plus this normal gb. And then our only other force is, again, this nba. So we have minus nba. And once again, there's no acceleration in the j direction. So this will be equal to 0. So now I just want to spend a moment to think about this from a mathematics perspective before we actually solve. And specifically, I'm going to look at the number of unknowns and number of equations. If these are the same, then we should be able to solve it. So right now we have four equations, and our unknowns are the accelerations, AA and AB, and the normal forces, NBA and NGB. So we have four equations, four unknowns, which means that we should be able to solve this. So starting off, low-hanging fruit, NBA is just going to be equal to MAG. And this actually moves into our other three equations. So next low-hanging fruit is going to be NGB. So between NBA here and the mass times gravity, NGB is just going to be equal to the mass of A times gravity plus the mass of B times gravity. Now that we have these, it's pretty easy to go ahead and plug into our I equations in order to find the accelerations. So to recap, we started off with our problem, understood what was going on with all the forces and the accelerations, so that we could write our free body diagrams for our individual pieces of the problem. Once we had the free body diagram, we went ahead and wrote out all of the forces in the coordinate system that we chose. So even though there were a ton of forces here, we could plug them in to the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration for each of the blocks. And the individual equations weren't too crazy. Once we found some of these intermediate solutions, the final piece of plugging everything in to find the acceleration of A and B is pretty straightforward. So the hard part of this in my mind is keeping everything straight, is the accounting of all these forces. But if you draw them all out and recognize that the internal forces are going to have equal magnitudes but opposite directions, then we have enough information to go ahead and solve. So I hope you found this informative and that you're ready to solve problems with systems of particles.